welcome to the Deep Linux channel. This video, I will talk about how you can find out what's happening under the hood in the Linux kernel. This video will be delivered in two parts. The first part is just the basics, uh, and the, first, the second part is delving a little bit more into the de uh, details of uh, kernel source code as well, but just a little bit. So what is this about? Let's say we want to know that given a certain workload, for instance, you're browsing, you're doing something, or maybe just like uh, sending a request to your server, you want to know what part of the kernel code is triggered more often. Uh, what part of the code is engaged? Uh, the kernel in Linux is very complicated. It has the network subsystem, it has the memory subsystem, it has the file system, it has the block system for block devices such as disk, it has the scheduler, and many, many things more. So the question is, when I do something, let's say I'm browsing, which part of the, the kernel is being used more often? And in that part, where in the code am I uh, actually making more um, usage? Why would I want to know this? Well, several reasons. Just curiosity. You want to learn about the Linux kernel. Or you're actually troubleshooting a performance issue or a bug. And you don't know where to start with. But all you have is a test case that would actually trigger that performance issue or bug. So what you would do is you would repeatedly run your test case and then apply the method that I'm going to teach you to find out what part of the kernel code you should look into or uh, what, what subsystems you should look into and where. So let's get started and up with the talk. Um, I'm going to use the perf scheduler for this. Um, and basically, let's open a terminal. So this is my new fresh terminal. And in this terminal, I'm going to run sudo perf list to get a list of the events. of the different subsystems that, that I have here in, 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 in a kernel, in a Linux kernel. Uh, just browse to so many uh, different events that this amazing tool can capture. Here, here we have the block device events. These are for block devices such as disk. So if you want to know actually what's happening in the IO, go for this one. But anyways, I'm, I'm just going to skim through them a little bit. Uh, we have the X4, which is the file system related events. And we also have and the IRQ uh, related events, uh, kernel memory events, and uh, kernel virtual machine events. Uh, also have system calls somewhere. Oh, okay, here. These are the events related to the scheduler. And then we have many, many system calls. All the system calls that you have in Linux, you can see it here. Anyways, that, those are the events that perf can capture. What we're going to do is that we're going to count those events. Now, capturing a full trace is usually very expensive in terms of uh, disk, in terms of memory, and in terms of CPU. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to accumulate the counts, which is almost zero overhead. Right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say sudo perf and run a stat, which is um, just the, uh, the, the, the performance counters, basically. Run it on all CPUs and only focus on these events. And here I can specify, let's say, the kernel memory subsystem. Right. I'm going to do that. Just wait a little bit and then control C, you'll get the counts. Right. But I can make it more um, appealing if I say update it every thousand milliseconds and it's just going to go on and update this every thousand milliseconds. So this is what I've actually done in a separate bit window and separate set of terminals and I've created these. So I'm just going to close this. Um, I kind of uh, split these terminals across my screen so you have a view of 
uh, many of the important subsystems in the kernel. So this this one is actually keeping track of the schedule related events. This this one on the far left, and then we have the kernel memory events, and then down below we have the socket and TCP events, and then after that we have the block related events uh, for disk I/O basically, and then here we have the network subsystem events which is usually uh, at the driver level and at the uh, layer 3 IP layer. So I've done this by running several instances of perf and that's uh, one of the good things about perf is that you can run several parallel instances of perf something you can't do with uh, for instance ftrace and, and this is what I'm saying. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, trigger some tests and see which part of the system is impacted. So let's do a ping. So I'm just going to do a flood ping, by the way. sudo dash f. Oh, sorry, sorry. sudo ping dash f for flood ping. And I'm just going to ping my gateway, which is here. Let's go. A password. Now, pay attention to what happens. Uh, I would suggest a pay attention to the far right, which is the networking related events. Go. Okay, see these numbers popped up. Yeah, one 170 something. This means that my ping is basically touching those points. So it's not touching a lot of things in, in the other subsystems. Well, yeah, definitely you have to allocate memory. Definitely um, you will have some block IO going on because of the memory that you're using so you're actually paging in and out uh, as a result you might page out for the disk not going to get into the details but you could see a markedly uh, like a visible um count showing up here in these uh, for these entries so these are the events that are involved there let's just stop that another test will be the memory test Without really getting into a much of the detail, this particular test here will um, strain the memory by in increasing memory consumption uh, one gigabyte by one gig gigabyte over several intervals. That's what it's going to do. So let's run it. Pay attention to the memory related events, uh, especially pay attention to this uh, zone locked page alloc zone locked thing and also the rest. So pay, pay attention to here and see what happens. Press enter. There you go. There you go. This got to a million, a million page alloc. Obviously, this is where it touches. This the, These are the areas that are affected. Not much network going on. Um, and here we also see some block related like disk activity. This activity is again because this memory strain is causing pages to be um, paged in and out uh, on the disk to free up memory, to free up cache, um, which would then trigger an IO. And hence, you would see these numbers going up. So I'm just going to stop this and watch for these numbers that will come back down. Also, here you'll see that the this uh, these block IO um, events will subside so let's just do it there you go numbers came down so the numbers came down so it took a little bit of time for the pcpu to, to drain these pages anyways that the pages got freed now these numbers these numbers usually jump up and down because block like disk is always active in in some sense but um and the activity went down and then probably went back up because of other workload that's running in the system. So that's another test. Another test will be the scheduler test. Let's just put some strain on the scheduler and see what happens. Let's try that. So for the scheduler, I'm going to try Hackbench, which is a utility. It's actually a scheduler benchmark. I'm going to tell it to run a loop of 10,000 iterations and just mind what happens here in the scheduler column. We're seeing a lot of activity in the scheduler. So a lot of tasks are being scheduled in and out. 
uh, also a lot of memory activity now that all ended as you saw let's do it again let's just watch for the, all the memory activity as well see because obviously when you're out when you're um creating threads and processes you're actually allocating memory as well because they need memory to run so that's obvious and then that will actually trigger a chain reaction in other places so you may actually experience some io and whatnot so this this example actually tells you how you can see uh that what, what you run affects which parts of the kernel this will be the end of part one in part two what i'm going to do is that i'm going to drill down into the details uh, of how i can go from one of these uh, events to the place in the kernel code to do further investigation so this is that's it for this video please if you like it give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and put your comments down below i'll see you in part two Thank you.